Welcome to part number 25 of Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec. This is the Movie Chicane, and today we're going to try once again to do the Supercar Nostalgia Cup. I went and got my Chevelle and tuned it up. 602 horsepower, 502 performance points. That's not enough. I already did an oil change. I just changed the oil right now. So I need to add like one more upgrade here. No, we already added the supercharger. Please don't race a Chevelle. <laughs> what if I want to? You know what? An exhaust. Let, let's give it a fart can exhaust. And I think this should do the trick. I mean, the Chevelle obviously struggles in the corners, but similar to the Corvette from the classic muscle car series, I forgot that that car is best on the straightaways. This car should be going on the straightaways now. So let's give it a go. Three races, Rome, Suzuka, Mazda race with Laguna Seca. And you know what? We're going to have... Screw Maldonado. He's not even trying. We're going to have Vargas go. Actually, all of my drivers are feeling good. Now, if we can have... Yep, if we can have those kind of cars lead the field, like Interceptor and Corvette, maybe that could give us some time to pass these guys. Because it's the damn Ferraris and Lamborghinis that are the best here. Well, I clicked on my own stream, so <laughs> you guys might have heard it in the microphone real quick, but that's okay. Okay, there we go. Load it up. Well, the one thing that these cars have that Vargas doesn't is better aerodynamics. Even though aero wasn't really a thing when these cars were around, I guess. They're much sleeker than the Chevelle is. Chevelle's a big boat. So I just decided to max out the power on this thing and see if Vargas can do anything with it. Because, really, the Lamborghini's gonna outrun us on the straightaways. I mean, out of the corners, at least. But on the end of the straights, maybe we can catch them? So that's the strategy now. The Cyborg pulls from the MR2. I think the cars are tuned, dude. Hopefully, I might actually cry if someone gets it right before I do. Yeah, dude, that would suck, man. That would really suck if someone really does get your get the record after all the effort you've been putting in, dude. I think, what, over 2,000 miles now? On just that one section of Tokyo Expressway. And that's it. I, dude, I would have given up after an hour. It's a Mirage Cyborg. I mean, I'm, I guarantee you, Francisco, that those cars are tuned somehow. 3,200 miles? Good lord. Dude, you deserve all the props in the world for that, man. I mean, holy crap. Seriously. The fact that you were able to put that many miles into trying this one challenge. And for what? Just a world record? Like, holy crap, dude. If that's not dedication, I don't know what is. Well, this new strategy isn't working at all. I guess we can just wait for Ikenen to be cold again. Because that's what happened last time. So Heikinen was cold. And Vargas had the opportunity to capitalize. But instead, Vogt, Vo, or however you pronounce his name, he got the lead and just walked away with the win. Maybe if the Ferrari can hold him up, that'd be good. Man, if the AI is like this around Rome, I'm not looking forward to the Lamborghini um, Gallardo one make. Seriously. That's gonna be hell. Yeah, I said to myself that I was this close already when I got 257.3, that I might as well push for the untitled, 
the untied world record. Never been this close to an actual world record, so this is sort of a landmark thing for me. Ah, oh. well, see, in that case, I mean, that gives me motivation to go and do it. Might as well go for it, you know? I can't say that I myself have ever gotten a world record. Like, I think the closest thing I've ever gotten was, okay, Gran Turismo 5, this game. They had some online time trial thing at Monaco with the Ferrari F1 cars. I got the world record when the event first launched. And I had the world record for two minutes. <laughs> That's the closest I've ever been to having a world record of any kind. And the only reason why is, of course, because not that many people entered at the time. But once the event passed like a day, then I was all the way down, all the way down in the standings. So it's no surprise, really. Dude, why is he swerving? Is he trying to warm up the tires on the backstretch? Like, I guess, dude, but you have a race, you know? You got ninth on the, on the Nurburgring time trial with the Red Bull and G6. Nice, dude. Yeah, same for me before this event came along and I realized that I could get up there. <laughs> Sweet. Well, man, you're going to do it. It's only a matter of time, bro. All the pieces of the puzzle and, and everything will, will come to you. Trust me. I know you have to like get the right amount of frames, the right amount of speed, the right placement of the cars and stuff, the right placement of the La Ferrari, but you will get there. Dude. I've gotten so close to getting the world record on the crew and the crew too. Really? Oh, in the event, ended? you finished fifty fourth, dude. That's still good. Like, the one that I was aiming for, like, the only thing I was aiming for in Gran Turismo was the top 10 stars for that one daily race, which was the Red Bull X2014 Jr. at Tokyo Expressway uh, East. I was, like, 11th, and I stayed 11th the entire day in my region, and I was just like, dude, I can get this, but I was just like, damn, like, I was so close, but so far away at the same time. It's story making us in the one so you got ugh, you once got into the top 100. That's cool, dude. Thank you. Another strategy narrowed it down to one or two, but really gotta keep grinding over and over. Hope you get it perfect. Holy crap! The sixth place. Nice, bro. All right. Well, status update. Vargas is caught up to second place. Second place is really sleeping on it. Hopefully Vargas drafts him and overtakes him into turn one because we need to make moves now. There we go. Up to second. What's hiking is, um, yep, completely cold. So we need Vargas to calm down a little bit. Now is the chance, dude. Now is your chance. Come on, get around him. Or move him out the way. Okay. <laughs> Alright, that works. A little bit of an Austin Dillon style move, but alright, dude. Great. The other Mira that's hot right now is coming. I remember the ski slope in the Crew 1 was a lot of fun. I've never played the Crew. I don't know if I'm going to get the crew. I don't think so. When there was a GT5 booth at my school, is the only one that successfully left Tokyo out of... Are you serious? That out of 1,400 people? Jesus Christ. See, I wish we had Gran Turismo booths and stuff like that at my school. Never, We never did. It wasn't until me going to racing events, like, on the regular, and doing the sim stuff where I'd actually start winning things. Yeah, it's also in the crew, too. That's where I got one of the 100-yard bike jump trophies or achievement. Sweet. That's awesome. Final lap for Vargas. Man, the Jensen Interceptors are just back markers in this race. That sucks. Everyone else lost at the first corner. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, last corner, last corner. Sorry. I'm, like, really focused on Vargas right now. 
because I'm still afraid he's going to lose the race. Oh no, bump and run from uh, for us? Come on. Draft him. Oh my god, why? Okay, we both we're both in the wall. I'm just gonna smash the overtake button. Oh my god, dude, don't Whoa! Oh my god, crashed in the wall! Into the wall! Okay, never mind! <laughs> Well, boys and girls, I guess that's the lesson. Never give up, because you never know what could happen in racing, and... Okay. We take the victory at Rome Circuit. Ryan wins the race after he gets punted, and... The guy got karma. Finishes down in fifth place. <laughs> Canada 2011. Yeah... I mean, I don't know. That was such a weird race. Like, this was a weird victory, but you know what? We'll take it. Rear wheel into the wall drove. Yep. Oh, drive. Yeah. All right, replay time. That's got to for sure be the replay. Like, the thumbnail, like, with, with the freaking Mira in the wall with him passing. <laughs> kind of like uh, my thumbnail for part 5 where it's the Shelby Series 1 getting loose out of the tunnel at Grand Valley East. Alright. I've tried over and over and over and over again with performance parts and everything for the Chevelle. This car is just not good around Suzuka at all. So with the slight probably 1% chance that we're going to find the Lamborghini Countach in the dealership. Let's see if there's one here. If not, let's buy a 512 BB and call it a day because man, this is so difficult. Yep, there's no Lambo in here. Use the damn Cobra? No, I don't want to use the Cobra. I want to use the Cobra for Ace back. So, we're going to use the Ferrari 512 BB. Which, I want to use this car for A-Spec as well, but, you know, I'll just sell it. <laughs> I'll just sell it and then buy another one. Or, I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, it's getting yellow. Alright, there's our Ferrari 512. You know what? We buy a Ferrari for this. Diablo Fly, yeah. You know what? We bought a Ferrari for this championship. We might as well use this Ferrari for the Ferrari championship as well. I mean, at this point, like, I don't even care. <laughs> I just want to get this out of the way, this Super Core Nostalgia Cup. It's, uh, it's such a pain in the ass. So let's give it a power upgrade. Now it's time to drop the weight. The course also has it too. Oh, really? So the transmission, eh, I think we'll be okay with the transmission. Suspension, let's give it a fixed sports kit. Nürburgring? I don't know, I just pronounced it Nürburgring. Okay, we should be fine. This should be enough to win the Supercar Nostalgia Cup. Am I going to do the Italian Festival? Yes, right after I do the Supercar Nostalgia Cup. The last two races. Nope, that's not where I wanted to go. I did not want to go to beginner events. Let's go to amateur series. 
Because we're already done with the beginner stuff. And here we go. Suzuka once again. Kobayashi once again for the wheel. Oh, Mamma Mia Ragazzi La Festa Italiana. <laughs> Amateur hour? Yeah. It's always amateur hour on this channel, dude. Always. Amateur backseating. Alright, so for like the millionth attempt, here we go. Oh, immediately you can tell the difference. Yeah, we got passed by the mirror, but no, you can straight up tell the difference. This Ferrari is much better at the corners here. I'm surprised that uh, Vargas even won at Rome. Well, he got lucky with the spin. Honestly, but... Yeah. I mean, I expect Kobayashi to just get up there quickly and just dominate. Immediately in the mirror, dive bombs. Yep. But we got around them anyways. At least, at least like, we got around one. <laughs> That's a third. Now we got another one to deal with, and then the Kuntosh leading. Goddamn GG everyone else. Pretty much. It's pretty much over. My boy Kobayashi is just going to come and whip all their asses by the third lap. At least I think. Or hell, even maybe by the end of this lap. Go ahead and finish the maze event. It's still paused. Nice. Good luck with the rest of the events, dude. There we go. Up to second now. Man, some of the premiums in GT5-6 look really good. Maybe they could outsource the PS3 model so the car list could grow quicker. Yeah, dude, that, they should have... Polyphony should have done... They should have did that, dude, back in the day. That was the biggest problem. It's like, they should have outsourced it. You know? All the cars would have been premium. Everybody would have been happy. It would have been worth the many delays. In the GT6 trailer, some of them look insane. I know, dude. Like they hold up really well today. The 2002 Viper GCS, yes. Yes, dude, that is such a beautiful car. Even in Prologue, I was shocked at how good some of the cars looked. That's, I actually never played Prologue. Never in my life have I played TT5 Prologue. But I need to. <laughs> I really do need to play it. Outside move on the mirror? Nope. Can't get the job done. I can do a 2002 and 8 Viper ACR photo if you want to. Yeah, dude, that'd be awesome if you could. Like, not a nighttime one, but um, maybe a daytime photo. Maybe for, like, introduction. For, like, the channel intro. That'd be cool. Well, stream intro, I mean, not channel intro. You're not kidding. Even GTS had one or two GC6 premiums, and they look fantastic. They're much better lighting. 
the much better lighting plays on the model so well. Really? Some of them are just GT6 premiums? Like, just transferred over? Same for tracks, midfield and GT6. Yes, dude, midfield and GT6 looked so good. And it was so sad that, you know, the track was added later on into the game. So it's not like any of the career mode events could even use midfield raceway. That was fortunate because that track is so good. Well, Kobayashi is pretty much just in control here. The GT6 premiums is good enough for PS4 models, but the shading is what ruined the immersion. So blocky. Yeah, dude, the shading is. Yeah. The shadows in this game too sometimes can be a little bit ugly looking. So let's see what's going on behind us. Dude, Kobayashi is just freaking dominating. Holy crap. Mira's nowhere. Smirnoff just gave up. Kohler gave up. David is alright. Good. Good's not so good. Moron. Oh, he's a moron. Up in seventh. Yang. I have nothing to say. Dude, the Jensen Interceptors. Poor cars. <laughs> I love those cars. And it sucks to see them in 11th and 12th. I played GTHD earlier this year, got a video on it, definitely unique. Yeah, I actually recently got GTHD as well. And I, I played only the first uh, time trial with the Roadster, I believe. Dude, it's so cool. It's so weird, too, like, to think that, you know, that, that's, that was basically Gran Turismo 4, but upscaled. At least from what I understood. Like, the HUD and everything was GT4s. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish the Classic Core Championship. I was typing on this PC last hour since my phone was low on battery. Oh, gotcha. Livestream just drained it. Damn. <laughs> well, sorry for killing your battery, Club King. Maybe the Celica ST205 returns to support, maybe? Hopefully. You know, the one thing that actually pissed me off about GTHD was that the Subaru Impreza Rally Car is basically a premium model, and it never came to in GT5, which made absolutely no sense at all. Like, they had a premium version of the Impreza Rally, and they never put it in the game. Like, it didn't make any sense. Matthew, alright. He pretty much just gave up. I honestly wish that GT4 was emulated for PS3 and 1080p like San Andreas was in early on, with PS2 copy being digital. Yeah, the biggest problem with that is obviously um, licensing. That's why Gran Turismo games haven't been remastered or anything, because you have to go through all the licensing and all that stuff, and yeah, it sucks. Well, there were two. Really? There was two? One shown at E3 and the bespoke version on PS3 and GT5 Prologue. Prologue with GT4 HD uh, HUD elements and whatnot. The cars felt pretty floaty, though, gotta say. It did run at a full 1920 by 1080 though, so clean for a PS3 game. A lot of jaggies, but still, it was sharp. I didn't even know about the first version, dude. Then again, I wasn't really familiar with E3 back in the day like that. Not until about 2008, where I even knew what E3 was. I think at that time is when Prolog came out. You know what, let's give the Jensen some love. Especially this one. Tucker is just like, giving up. Sunday drive for him. I 
Corvette sounds awful. Sister Ferrari. Oh, he has a modified muffler? Okay. Or exhaust, I mean. Yeah, the first one was literally GTA's, a GT4, but an HD. Even had bikes, too, from... Tri really? And whoever has their hands on that demo nowadays, like, they, they basically... Well, was it an actual playable demo, or was it something that you could only, like, watch as a video at E3? Like, did, did uh, Sony just show it off as, like, a, a video thing? Because if it was a playable demo, dude, you know somebody out there has that copy. And they're holding on to something extremely rare. Same way the people that have that have a GT2000, they're holding on to something that's valuable. Oh, so it was a demo, dude. Oh my god. Like I said, whoever owns that console, if it's not under Sony's hands, but whoever owns the data for that, dude, they're holding on to something really valuable. But that's too bad GT HD got scrapped. That would have been a really cool concept, like have four in HD. I mean, they could have outsourced it. Then you would have a lot of standard cars in GT5 that actually look pretty good. Not sure if it ever got released, but Clifty probably has it in back somewhere. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Like either them or maybe somebody who owns that console now like here's the thing i met somebody who had a um ea um wh what's it called the, the consoles that are he had an ea uh ps4 development kit version a dev kit ps4 and it had a bunch of files on there you know i i met someone who who, who bought one from a swap meet and we were just like, what the hell? And it ended up not working because, like, he couldn't log online or something because it was a uh, dev kit version. But, yeah, like, strange things have happened before, you know? You never know. Maybe a member who has left a copy. I doubt it, but that would be insane. Would be, a guy would be so lucky. Yes, dude. That's what I'm saying. But, yeah, his PS4, um, my one of my buddies, his name is Masa. Or I call him Masa. He owns a dev kit PS4. And yeah, he couldn't even play it. Like, it's unplayable because of the fact that most of the games need to be online. Can't really play offline. The games he plays are all online only games, usually. And so it's just like, well, at least he's sitting on something that could be valuable, but at the same time, it's like, can he even sell it? Could he get in trouble by EA for having it? Hell, did I just spill the beans? Could I get him into some trouble with, with greedy EA? Eh, probably not. Doesn't even know who the hell he is. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. What does matter is that we're on the final lap. Kobayashi is just destroying the field. Which isn't a surprise because I got him the card that he desperately needed and deserved. Yeah, just keep it because it's one of a kind, you know. Like I said, then again, he did buy it from a swap meet, so... It's not like he bought it from EA themselves. Maybe that person at the swap meet worked at EA, or maybe they just got it from someone they knew who worked at EA. I, mean, I don't know. Who knows? The world may never know. I'll be right back, guys.
Okay, I am back, and yeah, there's no surprise that Kobayashi is just cruising now and pretty much breaks victory because no competition from behind. Sweet. <laughs> And no surprise that Kobayashi's skill hasn't gone up that much. So, round number three, Laguna Seca, and let's give Adrian Fernandez a shot. Of course, no more login bonus because the servers have been taken down. Yes, sir. Because the online services do not exist anymore. Which sucks because I feel like they they killed off this game's online service. And GT6 is way too soon after the, the sequel was released. So when 6 came out, they killed it really quickly. And then when Sport came out, they killed off 6 really quickly. Also got this, it's almost been five years since, wow, really? Five years? Dude, it's been eight years since this game came out. You remember the day you got it? I remember too, 2013. See, I got the game, but then at, around that time is when I got iRacing too. Like 20, middle of 2014 is when I first got my iRacing subscription, and at that point I just kind of gave up on the series. But yeah, I remember getting that with the 15th anniversary collection, and uh, yeah, it was fun. Now I own the digital copy, only because of Marvin's um, discovering Marvin's channel when he was trying to do the whole drive all the cars series thing. That was fun, while it lasted only like a few days you got GC5 for your birthday in 2011 dude that's cool see it's nice when you can remember st yeah, remember stuff like that Kamui destruction just smashing his past his foes pretty much dude. oh no no this is Fernandez <laughs> that was with the Chevelle when when Kamui was trying to when he was trying to win with the Chevelle dude he just did not care like he was just trying to crash into everyone but this time around I mean you know he's doing okay Fernandez on the other hand he's really really fired up Adrian Destruction, <laughs> pretty much. They could have, well, outsourced the servers, I guess. Dude, they could have outsourced a lot of stuff, but unfortunately, Polyphony doesn't want to outsource, at least not until now. Which I guess, better late than never. But if there's ever a GT7, they need to outsource. Like, they have to outsource, dude. I don't care if the car has, like, 1,000 less polygons or whatever the hell it is. Like, I don't care if the car looks, like, 5% less... 5% crappier than, let's say, PD's actual model. I don't care. As long as the model looks good enough for me, that's it. Yeah, isn't there a version you can get, like a, like a Japanese version of that? I know Timeless Gaming on his channel, he is playing the, the Japanese version of GT4 Online or whatever. There's like a disc that was released, like a test demo. So 
So where's the cost excuses? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, it'd be too expensive. Uh, and GT Sports, obviously the future. Even though it has no content. GT PSP is peer-to-peer. -peer, still has online function. That's yeah, true. I mean, it's more of a... Wait. Can you actually play online with it? I thought it was just a LAN... I thought you could only play, like, LAN parties and that's it. Of course, the Interceptor's all the way in the back. Corvette's in the back. Ad hoc, that's right. Forza uses P2P. Oh, no proper matchmaking? Yeah, that's what I figured. No way, Forza 2 still has online multiplayer? Dude, I thought they would have gotten rid of that already. Wow. Forza 2 is one of the best ones in the series, man. That one's so good. Forza 4 was good. Forza 3 I liked, but I don't know. There was something about Forza 3 that I wasn't crazy over. Forza 4 was awesome. Sucks that all the DLC is gone and they never released like a Game of the Year edition like they did Forza 2 and 3. But, you know, there's still ways to get the DLC. I, I guess one of the things that bugged me about Forza 3 is the cockpit view. How high the camera is. Like, I, I never liked it. That's also why light cannons happened a lot in Forza 4. 4 and 6 are your favorites? I never played 6. Like, the ones I haven't played are 5 and 6. And any of the Horizons. Well, except for the first one, but only like... Except for the first and third one, but that was only like maybe 20 minutes max each. Really? What uh, what championship are you doing? Dry Lagoon. Yeah. Technically, it's a lagoon. Oh, the classic car series. What kind of car are you using? Oh, 300 SL, right? That's what you said? Salt Flats would be incredible in GTS as a test area. Bonneville Salt Flats especially. That's where the speed records are done, right? Old Skyline, which you can't really, really really remember the name. Mazda Typhoon Lagoon, good old memes. <laughs> yep, believe so. Okay. It has round tail lights. Uh, Skyline 2000 GTB. I don't know, I'm just guessing old Skylines from GT4.
R32. Clearly, classic car. <laughs> Alright, one more lap to go for Kobe or Fernandez, I mean. And pretty much the victory awaits. Before 1970. Okay, so it's not the uh, GTR then. It's like the Skyline 2000 GTB, right? It's like, it looks like a family, like, sedan from like the 60s. I don't know, that's like the best way I can explain it. It has like 120 horsepower, I think. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, because there's no way you'd drive a Skyline 1500 Deluxe in the championship because that one is way too shitty. I can see the license plate vaguely. Ah, okay. But yeah, that um, 1500 Deluxe is really bad. And then the one for like 320000 in the classic car dealer, it, it sucks. It's just way too big. Yeah, it's a 2000 GTB. I'm thinking it's that one. There's an AI that's using the 1500. Well, rest in peace to them. I remember I'm going to start up a GTS stream. Hope to see you there eventually. All right, man. Sounds good, dude. Hope I hope to be there as well. And um, yeah, man, thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. And there we go, victory at Laguna Seca, and that's the Supercar Nostalgia Cup finally complete. All right, well, it's time to see our new prize car. Hope it's something good. I expect it to be a nostalgic car. Only one more championship to go in the amateur division. And the prize for winning this championship is... A DeLorean. Um... Okay. I guess that's nostalgic, but it's the 2004 model. Okay, I mean, I'm cool with the price. We can use it in A spec eventually. Woohoo! 80 plus cars. Yeah. All right. So next time on Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec, we're going to be doing the Italian Festival and wrapping up the entire Amateur Division. So stay tuned for that.